had this idea, and I thought that I didn't think that the name was going to stick, and I was so wrong. <laughs> and now here we are. Many, how many years is it? Uh, it'll be five in October. And back then, I didn't really even think there were apps. Were there apps? That's a question for an Apple yeah, person. Sorry. <laughs> I mistook you for the lady that helped me downstairs with my charger. But I um, can't believe that we're sitting here talking about a group app. Um, and it's really been kind of extraordinary how the whole idea for Goop came about, and then I'm so glad you're bringing her because she can eat. <laughs> okay, so um, the app has three guys, New York, London, and Los Angeles, and um, I think it's obvious why you chose those particular cities, but why don't you tell our friends? <laughs> uh, I chose those particular cities. Well, New York was first. Um, I was raised mostly here, well, at Los Angeles, I was born in Los Angeles, I lived there till I was 11, and then I moved to New York City, and lived here until, basically, I moved to London, where I've lived for the past 10 years, um, and New York was first, I, I'm very much a New Yorker in my heart, and um, it's sort of the, the city where I really came of age, and so that, that was the first app. Um, and obviously I know Los Angeles very well and I spend a lot of time there. I've lived in London for a long time. So those were, those were the, the obvious city guides. Yeah. And the idea behind it was similar to the Goop newsletter, similar to Goop itself. Explain why you decided to take Goop from the site to an app. I kind of did the app originally for myself <laughs> more than anyone else because I um, I wanted you know a place to go to travel with where you know it's like okay where I'm I'm in New York what's what's new where should I go where do I like here you know as much to kind of remind myself of where I love to to go and walk and eat and and do all of those things um, and I think you know. It's got a lot of practical, and you know, for example, when I moved to London, I didn't know that if you have an emergency, you don't dial 911. Yeah, that is such a great part of this, so. <laughs> and it's why, why I also love it. What do you call it? Because it's a, it's a curse word. It's called. You just said no cursing. I said it's minutes. a curse word. What do you call it? It's called fuck. To go to work every day, basically, and I got to wear the Iron Man suit, which made my son very, very happy. Did you ever meet Tyson Kent? He plays Harley. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think I met him. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. We have another question all the way to you, right in the third row. Hi, Mark Barnes, local boss. Very specific in his opinion, so um, I'm not sure anyone would, anyone would sway him necessarily, but I think he has been recognized from the app a couple of times. I have another question all the way in the back towards your right. Hi, I love I love the app. It has great recommendations. Thank um, you. I have a question about, you refer to us as the like curation generation. Can you talk a little bit about the act of curating? Because I think we're all curating many different kinds of things to share with our, our networks and, and what that's like and the, and the feedback you get. Yeah, I think, you know, I went to um, Goldman Sachs hosts a private internet conference every year and I went to go hear everybody lecture a couple of years ago and um, I heard a very interesting talk from the, the CEO of One King's Lane are you familiar with the site? It's a furniture site. And um, he was basically sharing data about the amount of choice leads to kind of a dead end. It, and if you have a site, for we all have access to so much information that actually people end up inert. They, they don't make a purchase, they don't follow through, they don't, it's just, it's overwhelming. Um, and I think we are the curation generation that's like in with Instagram and Pinterest and you know we're sharing what we love, what inspires us and I think the idea for most people, you know, for all of us who use these types of social media, um, we're curating our experience in a way and, and we're sort of saying this is my experience and I'm curating 
it for you in case it may touch you in some way or inspire you in some way. And it's actually very powerful, I think, where we are sociologically.